Hey guys, guys, my name is Teamer, and today I want to talk to you guys about my general impressions of uh, Tokyo Ghoul Seasons 1 and 2. Now, why this is a general impressions video rather than a full-blown review is the fact that Season 3 is coming out, and I want to save my judgment for that. And also, I haven't read the manga, so I'm kind of an anime scrub right now. I've only seen the anime. Haven't read the manga, so I only know what the anime does, not what the manga does. So if you're looking for, like, a comparison to see if the, you know, manga is like the anime, I have no idea, and if you're a fan of the manga, you've probably already seen the anime, if we're gonna be honest here. But if you haven't seen the anime, or read the manga, or even both, then this is a big warning to you that this video is going to be about spoilers, so go on, watch Tokyo Ghoul. I will definitely say it's worth at least a watch, and, y you know, it kind of picks up and drops off in the beginning of Season 1, but I'll talk about that a little bit more in the video, and that should be right now. Alright, so instead of talking about the episodes themselves. I'm going to be talking about them in more of a general segment. So like the first part of episode, you know, or the first part of this first season and the ending half of the first season and the ending half of the second season and so forth, where I may pick an episode to kind of represent that segment in its whole, which might be a little bit hard, but I'll, I'll get into that. All right, so with the first part of season one, we kind of get the intro where, you know, Kaneki is saved by the... Not by the girl. Uh, and maybe in a, uh, in a medical sense, he's saved by the girl, but uh, he's turned into a ghoul. And, um, and when you kind of go for that first episode, it's really easy to tell that the girl is going to turn on him and it's, like, really predictable but it's still worth a watch just for the context alone. And uh, the second season, we kind of deal with, you know, Kaneki dealing with his newfound ghouldom, which is really interesting. And then it kind of drops down on episode three, where it deals with, like, some of his friends, and it's just boring and stuff like that. And then m more towards the second part of the first season, he begins to, you know, develop the friends at the coffee shop, and Teku, or however you pronounce that, I'm very sorry if I pronounced it wrong, and he makes these friends, and he kind of discovers, you know, it's not too bad, and I can manage this, and it gets really interesting from there, as the uh, torture segment, or I think the last part of the first season occurs, and he literally goes on a mind trip. And keep in mind that since the girl that he was infused with organs and became a ghoul with is kind of in his subconscious, telling him what to do and whatnot, that it really... it's pretty interesting. It's really creepy. Like, during the torture segment of the uh, first season, I was really actually like cringing and normally I don't even cringe at anime it's just like oh uh, okay then oh, there's some violence there I'll just uh, you know it kind of happens but when I was like listening to it they they don't even show you most of the stuff I was watching it on Hulu and they just kind of censor it and do all these dumb inverted color kind of a thing it's really bad, and I, I, but a part of me wonders, if I had that censorship off, would I be able to make it through the show? And honestly, I don't think I would have been able to. The torture scene alone with Jason, oh yeah, not to mention the subtle Friday the 13th reference with his mask and him being called Jason, that really impressed me. Sarcasm. But, um, with that, it was really interesting to kind of see Kaneki's backstory, and Kaneki as a character isn't someone I really think is truly interesting, but I can still kind of connect with him 
as a character because he's a ghoul and he's also nice, I guess. Uh, but, um... Oh, oh, I forgot about the best part for uh, season one, when you're introduced to the investigators. Yes, yes, and yes. Now, the problem that I have with most of the ghoul characters is that they're really anime stereotypey. Like, Toka or whoever is the Dare Dare Sunday. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm so sorry, but you, you know the tropes. You know, you got the crazy one and the emo one and all that stuff, then the old one, of course, and then you have the investigators, which are, some of them are still the same tropes, but they're interesting. Like, Motto is the creepy old guy, all right, you know? He, but he is my favorite character out of all of the characters, and at the end of season one, when he died was like the most tragic thing, because I loved him dearly, he was just like my waifu at that point, because I loved him so much. But, uh, when, uh, ah, what's his name? Uh, we'll get back to that, his assistant, I'll just call him his assistant, I'm sorry. Um, but his, when his assistant was taking over, that was really heartbreaking for me, because it was... They made such a good team, and I just love them to death, and I, I can't imagine that I would be watching the series without them. And the same goes with most of the Investigator characters. If the Investigator characters were not the way they would be, or they were in the anime, then I don't think I would be watching this anime at all, because it would be really boring. Now, that's not to say that some of the cool characters, you know, aren't good you know there's the gourmet guy he's really cool i love him he's interesting but really creepy at the same time and then of course there's the owl but i will talk about that later uh which is the coffee shop guy but i'll, I'll talk about the reaction later um and then of course you have some of the other guys like the devil ape guy who's just one of the coffee shop guys, but, and then that also gets revealed at the end of season two. I can't wait to talk about this. I'm sorry. Uh, and then, oh, geez. Uh, what else? I think that's just about it for season one. I mean, we covered the part of the torture scene. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, the fight scene for season one is actually pretty good like the ending scene where he fights off Jason it was pretty good but then afterwards like I couldn't really understand why he became emo and then I was talking to one of my friends about it and he was like oh he got tortured and I was like oh yeah that's something I probably forgot to mention that or even think about like it didn't even cross my head that the reason he's depressed is because he got his toes ripped off a bunch like really a bunch and then he became insane so now that we've talked about season one and pretty much everything in season one oh and of course the death of motto which is ugh. but uh season two we move on to season two and it covers more of Kaneki becoming an emo badass guy, and then he becomes slightly less emo when um, he meets some of the investigators. So, like, the assistant of Mato, whatever his name is, uh, when he meets him in season one, it's... It's kind of... It's almost like a wish fulfillment kind of a thing, where you want the two opposing sides to just kind of live in harmony because you like most of the characters. That's kind of what I was feeling during that part in season one where it's just raining and also Motto dies, which sucks. But uh, that was a little bit of a side tangent. I'm sorry. But for season two, um, uh, there was actually a, a lot of parts where I felt like... Uh, I, I just wanted more of the investigators, and I got that. Like, a lot of Season 2 covered a bunch of the investigators, which made me insanely happy. 
And, you know, Amato did come back in a couple of the flashbacks, which made things better, but not entirely, you know, the way I would have wanted them, as in Mato not dying because he's my favorite freaking character and you had to kill him off, jeez. But, uh, it kind of showcases some of the other, you know, investigators, like Juzo and Juzo's boss. I'm sorry for the generalizations here, but I'm forgetting names. And it's not that the characters are forgettable, it's just that I forget names often. Because the characters are definitely not forgettable, definitely not on the investigators, thing, like I've already stressed enough. Um, I really liked the whole segment where we got to meet Mato's daughter, because that was badass. And Mato's daughter is almost in as interesting as Mato himself. He's, you know, she's just a tear down from Mato, and I really like her because she's a really cool character. And then, of course, uh, being Mato's assistant, assistant <laughs> is, uh, you know, also really cool. And the fact that Mato left the clinique for um, his assistant is, like, one of the most touching moments in the series, for me, at the very least. But uh, with the uh, investigator side tangent, um, of course, there's the first storming of the um, castle that was season one or not castle but the building which was season one and when the uh, people were trying to go save Kaneki and then the second season where they did another storming to try to find the owl and now I think that the last half of season two was or just season two in general was really awesome. I loved it. I didn't really like Kaneki, but again, that's yeah. And Kaneki did actually get better by the end when Toka was, you know, being dare dare or whatever you call it. I, I, I don't even care at this point. But when uh, she was being dare dare and like punching him in the face, just like I don't want you to come here even though I actually do, so I, I lied I, I love you, not really it's not like I love you baka, ugh, and anyways sorry for that weird side tangent <laughs> but um and then of course the ending of season 2 where Kaneki is just carrying like his dead friend, his dead-ass friend, down the street is just pretty shocking. And I was just like, oh, no, that sucks. Oh. And then, of course, um, oh, back to the part where they find out that the old coffee shop owner is um, the owl. Yeah, that part, when I first saw the um, meeting between the investigator, the prime investigator or whatever his name is, and uh, the old guy, and he said, hmm, you know, I've seen you before. Where have I seen you before? That's when I knew. He's the owl. It was just that predictable. It was like, uh, really? And that's not the only predictable moment. Like I said, in the beginning of season one, there was the time where we found out that that girl was kind of betraying Kaneki, but I think that was a little bit intentional in its own way as well. But um, another, one of the other predictable moments was at the mm, kind of near the end, uh, Toka goes to visit like the burnt up coffee shop and finds one cup pretty much intact except for a couple of pieces chipped off and at that moment because I knew she was going to want to start a coffee shop because of context that was earlier in the show between a discussion between of, uh, her and her friends I knew that that was going to happen and so when I got to the end of the episode episode 12 it was just like I remember sitting there watching the episode with my friends, and they had already watched it before me, so they were kind of expecting me to be surprised, and when I got it, I told them that I had a hunch, and when I got it, they were just like, oh, 
wow, dude, are, are you serious? Are you really, are you really, really serious right now? <laughs> and I just said, yes, I friggin' called it. I called it. I knew that was going to happen. And I knew that was going to be a thing from the very beginning, from that context, and what was going to happen. But that was just a little thing that kind of uh, rubbed me the wrong way. I was just like, uh... That, that was oddly predictable, but really, all in all, I really love the show. I think that it's a good show, and while it has its flaws, it's really not a bad show, and I think everyone should give it a chance to kind of, you know, watch it. And I'm definitely in the vein of, um, I think that the investigators, with their cliniques, are the best characters in the show. I don't like the ghouls as much, but there still are interesting ghoul characters, and like I explained earlier in the video. So, with this big rant, ends my little first impressions of Season 1 and Season 2 of Tokyo Ghoul. I hope to see more of the show in the future, because it's a really good show, and for the love of God, I hope they bring Mato back. I don't even care if they have to retcon that shit at, like, the end of Season 1 or whatever. Just bring him back. Not, no one likes him being dead, or at least put him in more flashbacks, but I, I, I could be way off base here, and I could just... Because of the manga, I could be way off base here, and I have no idea how that would really work, so... With that, my name is Teamer. Thank you guys for, you know, watching this first impressions video. And if you enjoyed it, you can like, comment, favorite, or subscribe. And you can check out some of my other videos. I have a ton of videos, over 52 videos, and 53 counting this one. Thank you guys so much. My name is Teamer, and I will see you in another video. Bye bye